Um, I think we'll get started again with the second half of the workshop. And really the second half is more of the, uh, because we've uh, built up sort of most of the uh, components for our pipeline, the second half is more about um, using this with your particular data set and adding some things and customizing it. So, so there'll be quite a few bit of tasks in this part. Um, so uh, let's take a look at our pipeline again. Um, so we started, so uh, we were at um, here. So just right now we finished uh, the last uh, portion, uh, the very, uh, towards the very end, we finished building our uh, neural network or the Silbert model. Um, and we have this put together. Um, so now what we want to do is something more advanced, right? Now we want to be able to extract uh, parameters from our uh, text. So uh, things like name and gear recognition. So if you have an intent uh, that says like, oh, go from, how do I go from uh, just going from a location to another location or just going somewhere, right? Um, you can't just say like, if you return the, the answer, like, yeah, you correct classify the intent, but now you want to return the user, you want to customize the answer, right? Uh, let's say you say, oh, I want to go to Shibuya. So, okay, you correctly classified it as um, the go to somewhere intent, but now in the answer, you have to return like, oh, well, here are the directions to Shibuya. This is a you know, Google Maps link or, or something um, that uh, 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 so the user can use it finally, right? And there we get into this, this bit about extracting parameters from your data set. Um, and that's what we'll first look at. Um, so. Uh, we'll start with a very simple one, um, and this is this is basically named it key recognition. Um, a lot of the, so, but strictly, a lot of the parameters that you'll be extracting may not be named entities, or it may be very hard to define them as named entities as, as properly defined in research, maybe. Um, and this example will sort of tell you why. So we're just going to call this some parameter model, uh, and what it takes in is just a list of things. Um, and it says, well, okay, if um, your sentence contains any word within this list, uh, replace it with this label uh, and then return the same sentence, right? This could be a very, like, a very simple entity recognition, right? If I have like a list of, let's say for the same one, the location one, uh, if I have a list of all the locations in Japan and this bot is you know, for a hotel in Japan or something, um, and I put it in this model, it'll always replace it, right? Um, so that's a very simple way to get started um, on, on naming the tree recognition. Uh, and you'll notice this follows a similar pattern that we had before, right? Similarly to how in, when we started intent classification, we said, okay, let's do an exact match, a fuzzy match, a simple model, and then like a, you know, uh, a full on neural network that's pre-trained and fancy and um, close to state of the art, I guess. Um, so, and here for the named entity recognition part, we'll, we'll follow the same kind of uh, process and flow uh, because it's also a kind of pipeline. Um, but instead of uh, based on the intent part of it, it's, it's focused on the, the how to return the right answer part. So uh, we run this. Um, so I want, uh, I want a parameter model or a named entity recognition for different, let's say, food types. So I define a different, different bunch of food types. Um, a Japanese Indian Thai, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then made it into a list and passed it. Um, and now if I return, I want fast food, oh, it replaces the right one. And because it can replace it, it means I can also return it uh, to some other API. And let's say I have this uh, connected to a Yelp API or, uh, or a Google Places API, uh, where if you pass in this parameter and like some kind of GPS location, it'll return um, all the list of restaurants that have fast food in that location, right? So this could be also very useful uh, for your for your chatbot design. But obviously, like you know, with that kind of approach, you can easily run into issues, right? So similar to what we had before, um, if I complicate this now and just you know do fast food without this space, I won't replace it, right? So this is not, uh, it's obviously because this list isn't exhaustive and uh, maybe you could do some tricks with pre-processing and typo correction and 
all of that for this part as well. Um, but you could also maybe uh, use a model uh, to do better predictions of these kinds of things. And we'll, um, we'll, we won't look at the food one for this, for the model bit of entity recognition. We'll look at uh, locations um, and, and dates actually as well. Uh, because that's something that it's already we can we can use from um, uh, the spacey uh, model that we were using before for tokenization. Um, there's a small error here. I think we want to change this to SM um, because I think we haven't downloaded the, the larger model name. So if you're following along, uh, please correct the model name uh, right above here. It shouldn't be. It was. MD before I want to change to SM. Um, and this is also, it's just using the same model. So if you look at SpaceC and turn it into uh, a space, or what's called a SpaceC document, um, it has a list of um, entities uh, that it detects. Um, and uh, there's more details on what kind of model it's using, uh, but it's already been pre trained on some data set um, with a bunch of entities. Um, so and we're not like retraining this or anything. We're just using that pre-trained model uh, directly for our use case. So run that cell, and now if I do um, place entities, let's try a simpler one. Okay, cool. So I didn't put in any list or anything. The model just found uh, place entities. How do I get to Tokyo? It replaced found Tokyo as a, as a place and replaced it with its corresponding label, um, which is, I, in this case, I think it means geopolitical entity or something. Um, what about uh, dates? So SPACI doesn't only do, the SPACI model doesn't only do um, uh, uh, locations, it also does uh, dates and uh, uh, a bunch of other things as well. Um, but okay, for that, we can, we can do that. Um, but this, this model is also isn't exhaustive, right? Which is why you kind of need that pipeline. So if I, I think if you have missed it before, I'll try it again. Um, it doesn't find Shibuya as a location. Um, also, these models can be sensitive. So if I do uppercase, uh, okay. Uppercase, it found this entity, but it thinks Shibuya is a person, right? Um, so obviously this model isn't perfect either. And, uh, because this model was trained on a largely English corpus and uh, that maybe didn't have a lot of uh, Japanese sounding names in it, it didn't find the correct one. But there's also, so using these pre-trained, pre-built models that come you know, sh off the shelf from the library is, uh, is a good way to get started, but uh, it's, not, it's not the only solution. You may have to do uh, some more fine tuning or retrain it for your particular purpose and then use it again. So that's uh, named into recognition. So the next task uh, for this workshop is uh, uh, using your own named entity recognition to extract these parameters from your answers. Um, so the task will be you want to add an intent in your data set that has parameters. Um, so I'll just show an example. So uh, uh, in your training data, like before, in the, in the dictionary format, let's say, um, I'll just go with the location one. So uh, let's say you want to have a, a go to intent. And that needs to have patterns like go to so on, a bunch of these. Um, to return them <clears throat> properly, uh, remember we're attaching labels, right? We're placing our text with these, with these entity labels. So in your training data, uh, you probably don't want to have the name of the place itself because you want it to be generic. Um, so you can add what 
we had here. Uh, might. A bunch of these patterns like that. Um, so when you classify uh, the intent and, and get back what the, what the parameter was, um, and here we'll actually also return uh, the actual parameter. So, yeah. so before we were just uh, returning the replaced text, um, but we'll also return the parameter now. So now, I do this, it returns um, FA like the second, what, what the entity was. Oops. Sorry. returns the, um, the parameter that was returned as well. And now once we get this back, we can use this in our um, answer as well. And we can modify our answer so that Return that, and because we know this token, we can just replace it uh, with whatever our entity recognition return, and give that back to the user. If you're doing directions, there's probably some plugin to an API that you need to do, uh, but uh, we won't we won't do that part here. The important part is it was it was able to find the right location, the the right entity from the text, and then uh, return it as it, as part of the answer. So uh, we'll do that for uh, 10 minutes uh, so and any kind of uh, entity parameter. So if you're, if you're using, let's say, for flight location, uh, if you're using, let's say, flights or something, maybe you want to catch the flight number, right? Uh, and that's a pretty easy um, regex matching, right? So you don't actually even, you don't even need like a uh, machine learning model for this. You can always uh, just look, uh, do a regular expression and find maybe flight numbers are always like, Three letters at first, and then five letters at five uh, numbers at the end, or something like that. Um, something. So if you're doing a chatbot for the uh, airports, that that might uh, that might be a solution. Um, if you're using um, I don't know restaurants, and you want to uh, find how many how many tables or how many uh, seats they need, uh, that's also a pretty uh, uh, easily doable by string matching or some kind of um, regex matching um, to extract those parameters. Um, so give it a try and we'll start again in uh, 10 minutes. Um, okay, uh, people have had some time to write their own um, Um, we'll start again. Um, hope people have had some time to uh, write their own little uh, name entity recognition classes and uh, attach some uh, attach them to some of the answers as well. Um, if not, there'll also be some time uh, at the end for another task where you can get to it as well. 
So, um, so name and gender recognition is, is uh, as we looked at, it's a very powerful feature because it lets you like do all these other interesting things like uh, returning, you know, if you want to have an API attached to return uh, location directions or some API to find uh, restaurants or recommendations from Yelp or some other API it can be really useful and make uh, make your chatbot like just so much more interesting and useful uh, to users. Um, other things uh, like we had seen uh, before in, in, in my access presentation were uh, disambiguate intents. So uh, if you remember in the naive Bayes classifier, uh, we were looking at the threshold, we were looking at a threshold, right? We looked at the first prediction and the second and the third. And we said, if the first prediction is greater than the other two, the probability for the first one is greater than the other two put together, uh, then return the first one, right? So here instead, uh, what you could do is you could be like, well, okay, it's not, a, it's not, um, it's not greater. Uh, so instead of returning, I don't know, you can return. Um, did you mean the first one or the second one? Like, uh, you have to, uh, from from from, uh, from that uh, if statement, just change it slightly um, and let the user uh, pick the right one on what they meant, um, and that sort of makes your your accuracy go up and it. it makes for a better user experience too because you're getting less I don't knows and, and you're letting the user figure out which the right uh, answer was supposed to be. Uh, and it's, it's a very simple uh, and easy thing. You do the same uh, for uh, distal bird as well. Uh, look at the probabilities predicted by the neural network and compare them and if they're really close to each other um, just ask the user hey did you mean uh, the first one or the second one. Uh, another one would be uh, typos. So uh, here we didn't see too many, but obviously if you mistype, uh, mistype some of the things, the classification might fall because probably the mistyped word doesn't exist uh, in uh, your model. Um, certainly doesn't exist and exist uh, in, in exact matches. Uh, your fuzzy matching might be able to catch it depending on how bad the typo was. Um, your models probably probably not. Um, so uh, that's also another another easy fix. Uh, you could ha you could this could also have the same the type of correction could also have the same modular approach uh, that uh, you do for your uh, entity recognition. So start out simple, just have like a bunch of uh, values to compare with. You can have a large dictionary with okay, well if it's this word, this has been this can be typoed in this many ways. So do a match, and if there's a match, correct it, and uh, and then do the classification. Um, and then maybe uh, once you get to reach the limits of that, um, then you can start putting in something like uh, something like a model that like corrects the word or something. Um, anyway, more more complicated approaches. 